Hi, thanks so much for being here. Today I wanna to share a really neat fun fold with you. Now, some fun folds get tricky, complicated, lots of measurements, folding, all of these things. Today's is really simple, fits really well in an envelope. I think you're going to love it. And along with that, I also wanna share with you a few coloring techniques to help you save time and color in images really simply when you don't really wanna take the time to color them in all the way. Let's get started. Here you can see two examples of today's fun fold. I show you how they open. It just has a simple flap right here on the front that opens to a pocket inside. And then you can have a removable insert where you can stamp your greeting and sign your name. So first I'll show you how to create this basic design. Then we'll talk about these stamped images and I'll show you the few coloring techniques that I mentioned. So what you'll need to create this card includes the following. We need a card base that measures five and a half by eight and a half. We are going to score this a couple of times. I'll show you that in just a second. We need some designer paper or cardstock that you place on the front of those flaps. These are going to measure one and a half by five and a quarter and two and a half by five and a quarter. And then for that insert on the inside, this piece measures three and a half by four and three quarters. Now I did cut my circles out using the layering circles dies uh, from white and then the same color as my card base. So let's go ahead and score this card base and create those flaps. So we need to lay this piece so that the long edge is at the top and we are going to score at one and three quarters and five and three quarters. So I'll bring in my bone folder and burnish this several times. Pocket cards are fun when the recipient has something that they can actually pull out, something that moves. Uh, it's just a fun little surprise on the inside. So that's why I decided to share this pocket card with you today. So what we need to do is you have these two flaps. Now, when the card is closed, you want the small flap folded in first and then this flap over top. So what we need to do with the small flap at the bottom is to secure it on the side so that it will stay shut. So what you can do is either place a little bit of tear and tape right along this edge or just a tiny bit of glue like I'm doing here. You don't want much at all because if it oozes out, of course, you'll have problems. So I'll place that there. Now I will bring in my designer paper pieces and we can go ahead and attach them. So I decided to use this Flowering Fields designer paper. I thought it was kind of fun. I used both sides of it. So this was the same print, but I cut it apart. So I have the floral print that I put at the bottom of each card and the more basic print at the top. I needed something pretty neutral at the top because I stamped my greetings directly onto this paper. And I'll mention this, I don't always do, do as I say, not as I do. I, uh, it's a better idea to do your stamping first in case you would mess up the greeting on this, but I think I'll put it like this, but I'm adventurous. So I will do my stamping after it is on here. So this is the basic part of the card. We put this white insert into the center and it's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and stamp that greeting. So the greetings in this set are really beautiful. I use the in the moment stamp set for the images and the greetings as well. So you'll see a few of them here throughout. And I wanna use some Poppy Parade ink. This is that beautiful red that you can see down here on the tulips. And I'm going to open this up. That way I'm at least stamping on a flat surface. You're always so good to others, be good to yourself too. How many of us need to hear that? So now let's take a look at these stamped images and we'll talk about the coloring. So here is the one that will be for this card we're creating right now. 
I will bring this one in. This one is already attached to the card, but we'll talk about it as well. And this one that goes with that orange card we looked at first. So let's talk about this one first. I have colored this in with a water painter. And like I said, I'm sharing some tips for how to do some coloring and save some time if you don't like all the detailed coloring with markers or anything like that. Uh, another reason to do this is honestly, I just love the way it looks. On this one, I did a really messy approach as you can see. I think it turned out really neat. I think I may do more of this in the future. Now, if you haven't used water painters before, I'll show you right now how to do this. This is my crumb cake ink pad, and I'm going to grab a just an unused acrylic block. Now, since we're talking about saving time with coloring, I will mention this. You do not have to color in the entire image. You can pick a certain part. Maybe it was just her dress or her wine glass or the wine glass and the hat and just color parts of it. You can absolutely do that that and I think this is beautiful just the way it is if I wasn't demonstrating how to use the aqua painters I would leave it just the way it is but I wanted to show you how to do this in case you have not used them before or want a little refresher so there's water in my brush I can squeeze if the tip gets a little dry and I feel like I need water I can squeeze a little bit that's going to help dispense some more water down into the tip And I can just color, and I love the, the, the watercolor look with these. I feel like automatically, uh, automatically, I'm not sure what word I'm looking for here, but makes it so that no, I don't think anybody expects it to look perfect because watercolor isn't perfect. It's carefree and uneven, and I love that about it. So there you can see how I use the water painter on this image. Now let's talk about two ways to color images that are uh, very quick and very easy, a lot quicker and easier than what I just showed you. Now I've gotten these mixed up, which one goes with which card, but that's okay. What I'm going to do on this one is just to stamp a texture stamp over it. So here is a basic texture stamp I have. It's from our Natural Textures stamp set. This is actually a host exclusive that you can get with any order over $150. Or if you would like to invite a few friends over to make some cards or host a Facebook party, uh, you can get those host exclusive sets that way as well. So use a texture stamp. I know we've had some, I have some of my collection that are smaller. They look kind of like swooshes and actually uh, we're going to create a swoosh on our own on this one. Uh, but get a texture stamp and just stamp some texture on here. Now, I practiced before and I totally forgot when I did this this time, I was going to stamp off first to make it a little bit lighter in color, but that's okay. This adds some color to it, adds a little bit of depth or dimension, a little bit of interest. And once we get this on the card, I think it's going to look really nice. Now, the other way I was going to show you is to create that swoosh on our own. And I will mention this, you do not always have to color these images in. You could use these stamped images just like this. I love to stamp these in grays or browns and tans, just depending on what, what the image is. And they re really look nice without being colored in as well. I know I hear from some stampers who don't really love the whole coloring thing. So I like to share these different options. Now, here is my Blushing Bride ink. I am going to do the same thing I just did with that Crumb Cake ink pad. But I'm going to pick up some of this Blushing Bride ink onto this block. And I'm going to bring in my larger size water painter. The water painter set actually comes with three. And this is the largest one. This is really nice for doing backgrounds. So I'm going to pick up just a little bit of that on this brush, spread it out a little bit, and we're just going to brush this across the background of this card. Now that turned out really light. So if you get it really light, it's always easy to come back in and add some more color. 
as you saw with my last one, it's when you get more color than you want, you can't really go back and take it off. So it's a good idea to start light. So there we just added a little bit of interest, kind of like that texture stamp, but we did it with our water painter. So now that we have those done, we can go ahead and finish these cards together and you can see the final product. I do also want to share with you before we're done how to stamp those tulips on the inside, but let's go ahead and assemble these. So we need to attach the scallop circle to this card. When you do this, you wanna make sure you do not put adhesive all the way across it because if you do and the flap overhangs down here, you're going to glue your card shut. So I am just putting adhesive on about half of it and then I use my fingers and hold it right here on the edges and I know that anywhere below my fingers is going to be fine because there's no adhesive on that. So I'll attach it right there. And now I'll put some dimensionals on the backs of each of these to pop them up, give them a little three dimensional look. This is my take your pick tool that I like to use to apply my dimensionals. This is really helpful if you have any problems with your hands. So let me know what you think of this fun fold and fun folds in general. Send me a comment below. Uh, let me know what kinds of cards and projects you would like to see in the future. So I can use this take your pick tool. It's nice to put those dimensionals on, but then I can also remove the paper backing here. And we'll flip these over, attach them right on. I think the images in the stamp set are so neat of women taking the time to relax. We don't always do these things right. We're taking care of everyone else, making sure we do everything we can to make everyone else's lives better and we need to stop and take care of ourselves. So here you can see the outsides and so those different techniques for coloring. So now we'll stamp the inside piece for the one we created here together. I'll show you the two insides for the ones I had created beforehand. And I decided to use these tulip stamps on the inside because I'd used that tulip paper on the outside. Here's my blank one. So I wanted to show you how to use these tulip stamps because they are a two-step two -step set two-step stamping. So I'm going to bring in my Blushing Bride Ink and my Poppy Parade. And I have several of the tulip stamps here. I like to st stamp the larger of the tulip with the dark color and then the smaller part that fills in with a lighter color. So for this one, I'll do that larger part with the Poppy Parade and I'll fill in the smaller part with Blushing Bride. And then on these larger ones, I tried both ways. I tried stamping this one with dark and then filling in with this one with the light and then I tried the reverse and I honestly didn't really see much of a difference. So since I tried that, I haven't really spent a lot of time debating which stamp is which, which one's supposed to be dark and which one's supposed to be light because I don't really think it matters. Now I have this little one to stamp on the inside a little bit and we'll add some leaves. So I have some soft succulent ink here for the leaves and the stem. It's a really nice color of green. So I have one of the stems here that technically the top of the stem is over here and the bottom is over here, but so that I can get different curves, I use it both ways. And then the set does come with several leaves, but 
Just to keep things simple, I am just going to use this one and I'll flip it upside down as well to get different looks on it. So now we can slip this in that pocket and see our completed card. So here it is. We'll open that pocket up, slide this inside, and we have a really nice finished card to share with someone. So thanks so much for watching today. If you're interested in any of the products I talked about, you can find links in the video description below. You can also use that link down below to go to my website and find tons of other card making inspiration on my website. I hope you have a blessed day and I hope you'll be back again next time when I'll be here helping you to hand make with love.